So something you might be able to help me with, and perhaps others as well, is to understand the historical importance of the first Bach biographer, Forkel, I believe. And it ties in a little bit to the story of the videos on Andrashiv and the clavichord, Bach and the clavichord. And it was great to read your input. And if I, um, I didn't mean at all to be disgraceful, I want to clarify that first with the chocolate story, the chocolate slogans, really not. It has also to do with the use of English, you know. It's difficult to be nuanced in a language that's not your own. I try to do my best. But of course, I didn't want to be disgraceful at all. I appreciated all your input in this. I really learned from that, you know. It also opens my mind a little bit on my own work and maybe even on the topics to talk about. But I hope that's clarified by this. Uh, what I was reading, though, and was interesting, and it's not the first time, and I, it's, it's been written by people who I really respect. It's that Forkel is maybe not the most reliable source. And that has always wondered me. I was never very deep in that uh, material, so to say, when I was playing the organ or the piano, as you can imagine. But overall, when I started to play the clavichord more and more, of course, Forkel is, is a source that you come up with and you read. And it was interesting because it tied in also to the letters of C.P.E. Bach. You know, Forkel had a long time correspondence with C.P.E. Bach. They probably never met. And so reading more and more about him, doing some research on his work, I learned that he is in fact, even today, considered as a founder of the modern musicology. So he wrote about history of music, he uh, had uh, a musicalis in Almanac, which in fact is a. You could con you could compare that to what uh, Walter was doing in 1732 with his book. So his whole life was on writing about music, composing at the university at Göttingen teaching. And this correspondence with C.P.E. Bach was very important because um, he not only admired the work of Bach, he was not only one of his agents, but he asked also very much information about Emmanuel's father, which obviously served his biography. And I come back to that in a second, and that ties into my question to you. What do you think about that? So, putting this in the context, also seeing and reading in the letters, is, I made a book review of that, I will link it in the description box or here in the video. Very interesting to do, really can go and read that, it's, it's, it's magnificent. But anyway, his correspondence with Bach also makes clear that the Bach archive, which was for a great part in Emmanuel's possession, um, was sent by Emmanuel in parts to Forkel to be copied. And it was not only the works of his father, by his father, but were also the older works of the Bach family. You know, J.S. Bach had the Bach li library of works of his family and other composers, of course. And in bits and pieces, Emmanuel transferred that or sent that to uh, Forkel to be copied, and Forkel sent it back, obviously. So, Reading all of that, I came by rereading Christoph Wolf's Bach biography in a passage. Wolf, of course, is quoting Forkel often. Um, and there is a passage, you all know that, where Forkel writes about the way Bach tested organs, you know by pulling all of the stops and organ builders and organists were afraid then. So the story goes that the lungs, so Bach wanted to test the lungs of the organ and if it had good lungs, so to say. So, and he gives a description of how Bach tested the organs. 
and that he was of course very good on it. And Wolf, and that su su uh, surprised me, and the only way, the only reason I know or it surprised me is because I've just finished reading the letters of C.P.E. Bach. I would never ever have known it or just came up with the question. So Bar uh, Wolf ends this quote by saying, we're not sure where Forkel uh, got this information, probably in the necrology written by Immanuel Bach. Which is partly not the case, because the necrology, as Immanuel Bach himself writes in his letters, is not written by him, but only corrected. If I'm not mistaken, I'm quoting from my memory now. But it surprised me, not because of that, but I took the letters of C.P.E. Bach, so where is the the letter by Immanuel Bach to Forkel. I mean, I think it's 1776 where Immanuel describes in two or three letters those biographical statements that Forkel used. And so what Wolf is quoting is exactly what Forkel is writing and what Forkel is writing in his biography is almost word by word what Immanuel Bach wrote to him about his father. So there is, in the parts we can check, so the letters of C.P.E. Bach that survived, in other words, there is nothing, to my knowledge, to be found that was fantasized or just interpreted or whatever. So the letters of C.P.E. Bach compared to what's in the biography is one to one. Unfortunately, we don't have all the letters. They're not preserved, all of them. So the famous quote, the one that Andra Schiff was referring to, Am liebsten spielte er am Klavichord. So Bach liked to play the most on Klavichord. That's being rejected often. I've also read the interviews with, for instance, Leonard, really stating that that quote is obviously not true. But I wonder why, if you look at the context, of Forkel, I personally cannot find some elements to doubt on his integrity towards the Bach, what you could call revival. So why would we pick some information to be truthful and some other information to be not truthful? That's just a question I'm asking myself. I do believe, having dived in Forkel a little bit, and I will do it um, more in depth in future uh, um, months or years, I, I will make a series of videos on Forkel. I think he's a very interesting figure, but I don't know. I don't find right now something that can make me doubt about that quote of which, of, indeed, we don't have a backup by C.P.E. Bach himself. So, and to close this video and just give you some of my own personal thoughts about Forkel and the reason why I think it's important to dive in a little bit into his life and meaning. The whole Bach revival that maybe started certainly in Vienna by Baron von Swieten. You know, von Swieten was also someone who knew C.P.E. Bach, came from Berlin, I believe, to Vienna and so brought with him some scores of Bach was very influential to Mozart, to Beethoven on that. So there started something, but at the same time, of course, the Bach tradition lived further in his students. And that, that, is, that, that has been a very important uh, legacy of G.S. Bach, his children as well. But Forkel, in fact, ties into that in a very important way to my as I believe, because what he did for a long time, corresponding with C.P.E. Bach, trying to preserve as much information of Bach as he could, um, his connections, and I'm not sure about that because I don't find a lot, but I know there were connections between him and Griepenkerl. And Griepenkerl, of course, ties into journey. I believe also a very important historical figure in the revival, 19th century revival of J.S. Bach. And then there is a link, of course, to Mendelssohn. So 
I just wonder what you think about Forkel and certainly why you would think about it if you're right that we should be careful and taking serious what he's uh, what he is stating so I hope to read your comments and really again I'm really honored by the fact that you are commenting and that you are giving input to these videos I'm, I've said it a lot of times I have learned by this YouTube channel by all the videos I've made by the live streams by the videos on doubts and decisions and whatever I've learned myself a lot I hope to be of some inspiration if I can say that like that to to you but I'm always thankful to the input that you give so no doubt about that I hope that's clear so looking forward to your reactions and I'll certainly take them with me in the preparation of that Forkel series but that will not be for something for the next month maybe for next year when we do a lot more with CPE Bach the recordings of the partitas are finished we are now Tuesday 14th of February Valentine's Day so on Sunday evening I've made the last recording that will be uploaded on Thursday and I will make a closing videos also for this daily vlog that will continue in the future version of Authentic Sound 2.0 so to say that will be st will start 1st of March thanks again hope to see you next time again don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends bye